Hey everybody, Glenn here. Okay, so this week's show is going to be a little bit different, a little bit unusual, but circumstances warrant it. With uh, what happened with Hurricane Harvey devastating um, a big swath of Texas over there, uh, we wanted to focus on that issue, and everything has kind of come together last minute. So the first interview I just recorded just before uh, we got the show posted together, and that's with um, Hitesh Patel, HP. Um, he's the vice chairman of AHOA and is also a hotelier from Texas. Uh, we talk a little bit about how everybody can help and how the um, community is rallying together to help um, their fellow hoteliers as well as folks displaced from the storm and how you can help too. Also, we dig in a little bit more with uh, Sonny Talani. He is also a uh, hotelier out of uh, California, but he has hotels in the market with the Prince Hotel Prince Organization Hotels, and they're out to help as well, and he has a call to action on how you guys could help as well. And then um, after that, I have the what's typically the first section of the show, but it'll be the final section of the show, so it'll be a little confusing. I recorded that on Tuesday with uh, Scott Berman of PWC. We talk a little bit about the storm, the impact of the storm, and they get into regular hotel issues. Um, I flip-flopped the show this week because I thought it was really important to get these messages out first. Um, so that way you can help in this time of need. I want to thank everybody for listening, and I I hope that you find this show valuable and interesting. I make lots of calls to action that you can help. Check the show notes as well on ways you can help too. Uh, thank you for listening, and I will be right back. Do you live, eat, and sleep the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. All right, so I've been following the uh, the story we all have of uh, Hurricane Harvey that happened in Texas, and I have with me right now on the air uh, Hitesh Patel, otherwise known as HP, the vice chairman of AHOA and president and CEO of Capital City Hospitality Group. Uh, um, HP, you have uh, hotels down in the Texas area, so you must be um, really going through a crazy experience right now. What's happening with you? Yeah, right now, I mean, we're just where I'm based out of in Austin, Texas, so we didn't get much flood damage or wind damage like our friends in the Houston area and especially down on the south south coast of Texas. So they are, a lot of those hotels, I've talked to a couple of members and stuff, so the ones that were actually in the direct impact of Hurricane Harvey when it hit Texas in Rockport, Aransas Pass, Port Aransas area, Corpus, those hotels are destroyed. Wow. And I've seen some of the pictures where it's just going to take you know months and maybe even years by the time they get rebuilt and back operational again. So it's a huge issue going on in Texas right now, and especially now in Houston, with all the flood water still right. rising, and a lot of those hotels are going under too, especially first, second floors of a lot of hotels. So those would definitely have to be redone. So that's the issues that a lot of our members are facing right now in Texas. So um, t- tell me a little bit about then uh, what's happening. We'll get. To, I want to hear about what we're going to do about the hotels that are being uh, damaged, destroyed, and how we can help. But I'm also curious about how um, you and uh, the ho- your hotels and hotels that are in your area are helping with folks that might have been d- displaced because of the storm. Yeah, so what we started right away as soon as when we heard about everybody getting displaced and uh, pr- probably on Saturday evening when I had a call with Scott Joshua, the president of Texas Hotel Lodging Association. So we started brainstorming on what we can do to have hoteliers in the industry, and especially in Texas, how we can help out. So one thing that we started was a donation program for hotel rooms. So we urged all our home members and also Texas Hotel Lodging Association members to donate rooms back Mm -hmm. for the evacuees and also for the responders that are coming into Texas to help everyone. So we managed to get over 200 hotels in a matter of less than 48 hours to donate three to five rooms each for about seven to 10 days. So that was huge. And that just shows the support that we all have for each other in Texas. We want to help each other out. And for us to get that many hotels that quickly, we were even amazed. So those are some of the efforts we're doing. We're also doing local efforts. I know like in Houston area, a lot of the members are donating their time, volunteering at shelters, you know, preparing meals, bringing in food, supplies. And that's the same thing that we're doing in Austin. We did about 6,000 welcome kits for all the evacuees coming into Austin. So we want to make sure that we had like, you know, sheets, towels, pillows, blankets, you know, diapers, necessities for food. So we want to make sure that we're welcoming all our new friends coming into our cities to make sure that we're opening up with our open arms and welcoming them the right way. That's uh, that's really wonderful. I've also heard of uh, hoteliers really um, coming together. If they couldn't give away rooms for free, then at least they were keeping the rates super low or in some cases just lowering them to uh, levels of cost. Are you seeing a lot of that in, in the communities that you're dealing with? 
Yeah, I mean, the community that we're, we're, as soon as it happened, I know like in Houston, they were just opening the hotel rooms for people to come in and especially for staff members who couldn't go back home. So a lot of the hotels were not charging or just charging minimal just to make sure everybody was safe. Right. I know in Austin area where I'm based out of, we did the same thing and, you know, just started opening hotels, out, especially downtown where there's a huge cluster of rooms. And that was phenomenal that everybody just, you know, came out of their way and just said, you know, we're here to help whatever we can as hoteliers. That's uh, that's really uh, wonderful and very encouraging. It's great to see that um, people are rallying together in a in a time of need. What about all of these um these these folks that operate hotels that have been uh, damaged and destroyed, as you you say? Um, what can anybody do to to help them? I'm sure they have some insurance, but I understand that not a lot of people necessarily have flood insurance, and that might be a big problem for these folks losing their livelihood. Yeah, correct. So a lot of these hotels that got affected, they might have had like hurricane insurance and stuff, but mainly not flood insurance. So what we are doing, we're actually scheduled an emergency town hall meeting in Houston on Tuesday next week at four o'clock at the Hilton at the Galleria. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with FEMA folks. We're going with State Department folks, also insurance adjusters, claims adjusters, and also insurance agents to make everyone you know knowledgeable of what their options are, even if they don't have flood insurance. The state is actually in with the federal government. They're also going to be backing up some loans that they're going to be creating. So that's another avenue that they can use as far as state funding, using their own policy claims that they have, or any means that possible that we can help assist. And that's our whole intent, just make sure that we are ahead of the game now. We want to make sure that these claims are getting filed on a timely basis before there's a huge backlog that's occurring where our members won't even be able to renovate the hotels or even get any revenue. So we want to make sure that they're ahead of the game. And that the whole process starts with educating, educating, educating. And that'll be taking place on September 5th, as, as you, you said. Um, is there any way for uh, hoteliers that may be listening to this that happen to be affected um, that they can get involved in that particular event? Yeah, so the town hall will be on Tuesday at 4 p.m. at the Hilton Southwest Galleria. So, and it'll also be on the whole website, and we're going to send it out to all the membership in Texas and Louisiana also. So if they are in the area, we encourage any hoteliers to join because that would be a great area for everyone to get knowledge on what's exactly what they're trying, how to process their claim and how right. to actually do it. Right. Um, do you still need more rooms for the, uh, the rooms program? Excuse me. Do you still need more um, rooms to, to to be donated for the rooms program in the uh, the areas that are affected? Yeah, well, I mean, we're yeah, we're still taking in rooms. I mean, we're pushing a huge social media campaign, email yep. campaign. Just you know, whichever hotels, even if you have like two rooms to spare, we're taking any rooms that we can because at the end goal is to make sure that everyone has a place to stay for a couple of days until everything is worked out with the, the evacuation shelters. Right. And also once FEMA starts rolling out their program too. Right. Uh, uh, excellent. I, I love to hear that. As soon as I saw you post it on Facebook, I put it up on all of my different websites and on my social media channels as well. And I will include that link in the, the show notes for this week's show as well. And it's basically just a, uh, a Google document, right, that everybody could just sign up on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a simple document. It's a two-page document. You put your hotel name, your address, which nights you want to actually give rooms available. So you don't have to give them every day. You can just put the days that you have availability, which hotels, and then just put your email address and then submit, and then we'll take care of everything from there. We'll get hold of the general manager, whoever you have on contact, will coordinate and how to get you listed on the site and everything. So it's a pretty seamless process. Right. Uh, absolutely. And um, as far as uh, what AHO is going to be able to do for its uh, members that were affected, other than the educational program, do you know if there'll be any sort of uh, collection being taken up to help these folks out as well? Yeah, we are actually going to be starting an AHOA disaster relief fund. We've actually allocated some money from the board itself as mm -hmm. soon as this issue happened. So the board allocated X amount of dollars to be donated to a few charities in the area. So Perfect. we're actually going a step further now. We're creating an AHOA disaster relief fund, which we, not just to use during this Hurricane Harvey, but just have it active where if there is another nat natural disaster happening in the States, we are already, already are there and we're prepared. So this was a good learning experience for us as an association as well. I think so. And it, it sounds like something that in retrospect may have seemed so uh, obvious, but now you can actually do it and, and go ahead with it and help people in, you know, for coming generations generations as well when crisis happens. Correct. Yeah. And the whole goal at the end of with our relief fund, we want to make sure that every dollar is used to give back to the communities where we could feel that that's the best need for that community at that time. Right. Is there anything else that uh, we need to know at this point, HP? 
No, just be on the lookout. We're going to be hosting the Houston one. Like I said, we'll also be doing mm-hmm. one in Corpus, one in Valley Victoria, one in Lake Charles. We're going throughout the whole areas that are affected. So I know members can't travel to Houston, especially if you're uh, in, impacted in Corpus. So we will be having one there. So we're in the process of planning all those out. And we'll be sending it out on our website and also through our email blasts and also through social media campaigns. All right. Terrific. E- excellent. And if um, any of you all want to help, uh, some of this information will be in the show notes, but also find me at Traveling Glenn or just drop me an email, glenn at rouse.media. Any, um, anything else that you want to add in terms of uh, how they could contact people, could contact you guys uh, directly in order to help out? Yeah, just call our OHOA office or just contact us at OHOA.com. And just on our website, you can just hit, you know, contact us at the email address or info at OHOA.com and email us. But we appreciate anything that anybody can actually do for these evacuees and also for our fellow hoteliers. Anything helps at this point. So I encourage everyone to get out, donate. If you can't donate, volunteer your time because a lot of these shelters, they're undermanned. So if you can volunteer your time, that's a huge plus too. So. And I also want to just say thank you to all the states, all the other associations that have came and helped in this time of need. And it really means a lot being from Texas and also being part of OHOA as vice chairman and being able to show that Texas comes together as a state when there is a time of need. And that's very impressive. I think so. And I'll, let me extend that. I think uh, all Americans come together to help each other in times of needs. I, I've, seen it, I've seen it time and time again. And no matter what differences we have, it's a... Uh, Really amazing how they all just kind of disappear in times of crisis like that. So as difficult and heartbreaking as everything that you're seeing, I'm sure it's also something that's really um, underscoring your faith in all of humanity as well. Okay, appreciate that. Great. Well, uh, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. I know you've got a lot more important things to do than uh, talking with me today. So uh, good luck to you. <laughs> and I will be uh, thinking of you and wishing everyone the best. And um, for everyone out there, again, just check my show notes and we'll see what we can do to help everyone out. I want to thank you guys for listening and I'll be right back after this message. Back to the show. It's No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Uh, so um, right now I'm speaking with Mr. Uh, Sonny Talani. He is with Prince Organization Hotels out of the West Coast, California. And um, he's very in favor of trying to help the folks right now that are suffering from Hurricane Harvey. In fact, he's a big proponent of the Hurricane Harvey Complimentary Room Night Coalition and owns hotels both in Louisiana, close to the devastated area, and a couple of them in Dallas and Austin. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Uh, good, sir. I'm doing my best. I'm uh, having a good day uh, watching TV and looking at all the recovery efforts which are going on in the Houston area. Yeah, it's amazing to see what is uh, going on over there. And of course, uh, you know, we're both uh, got lots of thoughts with those people dealing with real problems, kind of uh, frames life for you, right? Uh, we think uh, things are tough and then we see something like that and we realize how, how good we all have it. I'm curious as to you. Um, what you think is going to be happening here with the situation and how you hope to be of, of assistance to the folks that have been displaced? Uh, you know, sir, I was actually in Texas last weekend uh, before when the warning started to come out in the middle of the week, uh, before the last weekend, and I was in Texas with my wife and my children visiting all of our hotels like we do. And the minute we found out, uh, I made a conference call with my hotel in Dallas, with the two hotels in Nacogdoches, and I was in Austin. We looked at the rates for the weekend, uh, and we actually reduced our rates. We looked at what the competitive set was already charging and raising, and we actually went a little bit lower Terrific. to make sure that if people are driving in from San Antonio or Corpus Christi, you know, so we can take care of them. I also told my staff to be on a full alert if they need to be present on the weekend and help out in any way or do some voluntary work. And I immediately reached out to the Hotel Business Magazine as well as American Hotel Lodging Association and the Austin Lodging Association, letting them know that if they need anything, we we are there for them. They can have my number. I gave them the number for my general managers as well as the Nakatoches Hotels and hotelbusiness.com and Ahova. They started to put a word out on social media that if anybody needs any rooms, any supplies, any toiletries, we will do our best to help them in this time. And I feel very fortunate in that I've actually today is the 10th year anniversary of my company in the business today. And giving back in this way 
uh, we have always done giving back in the past, but it's been more in good times. Right. But giving back in this way, we feel extraordinary, extraordinarily blessed to do that. Right, and I could tell um, from uh, your your accent, you probably weren't born in California. So um, uh, it, it must be feel good to give back to to people in a country that's helped uh, you and your family create a decent life for yourselves as well. Uh, yes, sir. And I have been in America for almost uh, twenty years now. I came here with nothing and Amazing. just a dream to work hard and work hard and do my best to contribute in this great country. And since that day to now, I have only lived a life of gratitude. My wife, you know, Neela Tolani, she's a full-time volunteer at the local Palinda Placentia Unified School District. She's a full-time volunteer at the school district. And uh, she also gives back with her time and her energy and all the resources we have. Yes. Um, have you uh, heard any stories coming from your uh, your hotels in uh, Nagadoches, Austin, and uh, Dallas about some of those displaced folks coming and staying and what's happening with those folks? Yes. I spoke to my general manager, Kenzie, out of the Dallas Waxahachie Hotel, and she told me that there have been a few families come over there. In fact, her mother, Kenzie's mother, has cooked some uh, house uh, soups and some Wonderful. meals for the people as well as we are giving uh, toiletries like, uh, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, some supplies, diapers, baby diapers, as well as hot food at the hotel. And the same thing in Nakadoches, my general manager, Teresa Keys and Heather and my whole staff is on a full alert to take care of anybody comes and walks in. We want to treat them with first and foremost with respect and dignity and welcome them so they know that, you know, we are there and we care for them. And I'm sure many other hotel owners have opened up the doors or are opening up the doors to do the same. Yes. And one of the things about the hospitality industry is in, in times of trouble, um, so many come through. But there are, are a few out there that are taking advantage of this situation. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm very proud. I do some work with uh, Best Western and they found one of their hoteliers um, raised prices significantly. And immediately the response was to remove the person from the system of hotels because they wouldn't stand for that. So uh, it's good to see the hotel industry standing up for uh, what's right and not just thinking about the bottom line. I think we spend a lot of time worried about how much we're going to make, like of course anybody does, but in times like this, it's great to see that folks like you and others um, and everyone at the Prince Organization Hotels are, are coming through to help their fellow Americans find uh, comfort in a time of tragedy. So I'm really happy to hear that from you. It's my honor and it's, as I said, it's a blessing that God has given us the capacity to contribute and, you know, share with our brotherhood and sisterhood. Um, yes, before we uh, wrap up, uh, if people do want to get involved and participate, do you have any way for, um, for them to, to contact the, uh, the right folks in order to get part of this ability to help with these hotel rooms? Yes, they can contact us through uh, social media and hotelbusiness.com has set up on LinkedIn as well as the American Hotel Lodging Association also has set up on LinkedIn and uh, their uh, Facebook websites as well as AHOVA also is doing a good job of, uh, they have a, uh, I think they are uh, tabulating a report of the name of the owners, the properties, and how many rooms and what assistance we can offer. AHOVA also has stepped up and doing a tremendous job on it. That's uh, that's uh, really terrific. And also, I'd like to add that on, um, you know, if you fi- follow me at Traveling Glenn on Twitter and Instagram and check out the No Vacancy podcast page, I have all of the information on how you, too, can participate in helping. I just got some breaking news as we were speaking here, sir, that uh, Wynn Resorts has given $7.5 million to help those affected by Hurricane Harvey in Texas and Typhoon Hato in Macau. So it's really great to see that um, everybody's rallying around this call. And as horrible as it is, I think it really brings out the best in people. And I really appreciate you um, being here today with me, Sonny. Thank you. It's my pleasure and my honor. All right. And uh, I want to thank you. And I'm going to be back with another interview in just a second. Thank you all for uh, listening today. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No vacancy. The hospitality industry's number one podcast will be right back. Hey, everybody. 
Glenn here, and if you're like me, then I know that you love terrific art. Art that creates a sense of place. Art that tells a story of where you are. Art that adds a level of detail that you can't get anywhere else. And the great folks that do this, Kevin Barry Fine Art Associates. You can find them online at kevinbarryfineart.com, and I highly encourage that you check them out. Uh, one recent project that I'm totally in love with is the Fairmont, Washington, D.C., where they created a custom project with a local artist, and they created some of this on site. They actually created a multi-dimensional wall sculpture from Gold Blocks, which is an abstracted map grid of the Washington, D.C. area. It's got different elevations to it and looks absolutely fantastic. It was done along with Deborah Forrest and Amanda Jackson of Forrest Perkins, which is now Perkins Eastman. And they all work together to create this fabulous new look. So if you want to create a fabulous new look for your hotel, or if you just love great art, check out KevinBarryFineArt.com or give him a call at 310-945-2655. Let him know Glenn sent you. Back to the show. It's No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to this week's No Vacancy with me, Glenn Hausman. Absolutely delighted to have you here each and every week as I talk to some of the leaders in the hospitality business, those folks that are shaping our industry and now and in the future. And boy, do I love this business. It's such an exciting time for us. But there's a lot of stress going on in the world. We are, uh, we're dealing with what's happening in uh, Houston, Texas right now and those horrible floods in that region. And it's really, uh, it's really quite tough for people to uh, deal with. I know I'm a little uh, taken aback by it. I know you can't hear it from the enthusiasm in my voice. But that enthusiasm is because I have a great guest with me, someone I've always wanted to have on the show. And he's coming straight from his stage at a hospitality conference near you. And that's Mr. Scott Berman, principal and U.S. industry leader, hospitality and leisure with PWC. How are you, sir? Doing well. Thanks, Glenn. Well, uh, thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, I really appreciate it, especially uh, today. It's kind of um, it's kind of a solemn time with everything that's going on in, in Texas. And I feel weird even um, having a conversation, recording a show and trying to have a very positive, uplifting sound in my voice when people are going through such abject hell right now. But I thought um, having you on the show might be a little perspective to understand what happens in the hospitality industry and hotels in particular when a, a crisis like this happens. And of course, I'd love to talk to you about the general um, industry in, in, in summation. So first of all, let me start off by saying, Scott, how have you been? How's your summer? What's going on in the world of PwC? Well, it's, uh, we, we've come to the end of summer. It's hard to believe that Labor Day is next week. Um, you know, and uh, we've spent the last couple of weeks at PwC looking at first half results um, for the industry. And uh, you know, I'm happy to say that uh, I think we're we're generally on track, um, and uh, I know you and I will get into some of the yep. specifics in a moment. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it is appropriate to bring up Houston at the beginning of this, Glenn. Um, you know, the story is still being told. Yeah. Um, and, as, uh, let as, me as just we, tell the audience that we're recording this on Tuesday and the show's being released Friday. So if stuff happens in between the time that uh, we recorded and listened, now you guys understand why there's some um, incredible gaps of our information. So sorry, Scott, please take it away. Yeah, well, hopefully by Friday uh, uh, the situation improves. Uh, but, you know, I uh, I reside in South Florida mm -hmm. and um, prone to storms. And in 1992, which is my first year at PwC, um, you know, 25 years ago, virtually this week was Hurricane Andrew. Right. Um, and it, it was a game changer uh, for the region, for the city of uh, Miami. And it, it was a crossroads time for the hospitality industry. Um, you know, and if there's there, there, are, there have been other events, whether it's Katrina in New Orleans or, or uh, Superstorm Sandy a few years ago. Uh, you know, that hit Jersey and uh, New York and the whole Northeast Coast, um, you know, these storms have uh, significant impacts. Um, and I think, you know, there are several phases that, you know, Houston will go through um, as it begins its recovery. Uh, there uh, is no question that the business disruption will be tremendous. Uh, and, you know, the hotels will file those claims and um 
you know, if there's any silver lining, it's that, you know, uh, ideally those proceeds will help them get back on their feet and um, uh, generate a better, fresher uh, hotel inventory. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that even before Hurricane Harvey hit the Texas coast, that Houston as a market, as a lodging market, uh, has been a bit of a laggard uh, since 2014. That's right, Scott. As, one know, of, as a matter of fact, one of my uh, favorite pieces of advice when I give um, that I give on stage when I'm doing some of my keynote speeches is uh, don't be Houston or Miami, and you're probably in good shape. Um, unfortunately, that's really ringing true today for Houston. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, there's a, a convergence of issues. Obviously, the uh, economy of, of greater Houston is... Um, focused on the energy sector, um, which, which has had a difficult time over the last three years. Uh, but just looking at STR numbers, uh, you know, rev par in 2014 for Houston was nearly $77. Um, to, today, um, it's 2016, uh, rev par year end was $65. Oh, goodness so a, a rapid, a rapid deceleration. Um, now, now the, the it's, it, it's unfair to characterize Houston, um, in any sort of normal environment. Uh, but those hotels that will be able to operate during the recovery will be beneficiaries. Right. Because what we learned in these other storms like Andrew in Miami and Katrina in New Orleans is that the infrastructure uh, uh, redevelopment and the uh, renovation that uh, needs to occur will go on for months, probably even years. Um, and so there will be a demand uh, for uh, accommodations. Um, and and the segmentation in Houston will likely change over the course of the next uh, couple months and year. So, you know, um, clearly there will be hotels that will be out of order, um, out of inventory. We'll have to look at the overall supply metrics. Uh, but I, I expect Houston occupancy during the recovery period to be quite strong. And do you think that – they'll get better rates or even can they get better rate and still live with themselves? Cause you don't want to be in a position of price well, gouging, but they need to make a fair profit at the same time. Uh, it seems to be kind of a, a, a tough place to be in, I would think for a hotelier. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that clearly the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, attorney generals of, of Florida and Louisiana um, were, um, very conscious of potential gouging um, situations. And um, I would say that anybody that tries to take advantage of the situation, um, at least based on the Miami New Orleans stories, you know, they became the headlines. Right. Um, and th that's not a place you want to be. No, it's also just uh, plain gross and offensive, if I might go that far. I think um, now that you're, you're jogging my memory, I believe with Katrina, they actually had to put in some rules on pricing for hotels to prevent the gouging. Or they said you can't go above a certain X percent of what you were the day before the storm or something like that, if I'm recalling correctly. Do you have any recollection of that? Yeah, well, I, 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 I don't recall New Orleans specifically, but I can tell you factually that mm -hmm. in Florida, after Hurricane Andrew, state legislature passed uh, laws prohibiting uh, gouging and, and putting uh, certain caps on uh, room rates, um, you know, in the light in light of a uh, catastrophe. Right. Um, so. Um, and I think, you know, same thing in, in the Northeast, uh, we've seen, you know, similar uh, situations, but I can assure you that law enforcement is laser focused uh, uh, on, on the situation. And I'm sure that every single hotelier I know that happens to be in uh, Houston is not of the character that they would do that sort of thing. I think very positively about all of our hotel industry brethren. So I'm going to say that this is people that are not engaged in the little universe that we are in on a day-to-day -day basis because I, I simply can't imagine some of my buddies doing something like that. It's just unconscionable. And I just hope that they're all okay and doing well. And um, one of the things that I'm curious about is now uh, going forward, 
um, the numbers in Houston and the general surrounding vicinities are, are, are going to be out of whack. Does that mean that um, when we start to talk about industry numbers and aggregate, there's always going to be an asterisk and you're going to have to call attention to that over the next few years? Well, I, I think that um, even before the tragedy of this week, mm-hmm. um, you know, the analysts were pointing out that those markets that are uh, reliant on the energy sector, um, right. you know, ha- have been impacted and, you know, have been outliers. Um, I, I think that will continue um, just for different reasons. So the answer is yes, you've got the fourth largest city in the United States impacted by this event. Um, you know, a very large diversified lodging um, uh, portfolio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so um, I think, you know, we, we need to give it a, a month or two and to fully understand, you know, um, the impact of the event. But yeah. no, no question. No question that uh, we we will have to look at it with a different lens. Yeah, uh, ab- absolutely. And um, for those of you folks that um, want to know what's going on, I saw an interesting note coming from uh, Best Western today. They have a program called Best Western for a Better World, which supports um, members and guests in storm-impacted uh, regions, such as the one that's here. They're doing a donations and they're providing on the ground support and steering those um, ha- that are impacted have access to shelter meals supplies medical services and more it's really good to know that the hotel industry actually tries to be good stewards of the community in which they're in and i, I only point to best western because i saw their note but i expect a lot of the other other major hotel brands are going to be stepping up and doing something similar i i bet you got to agree on that one scott they, they, they already are. Yeah. Um, and, you know, th- this is uh, America at its best. Yep. Um, and, you know, our colleagues in the, in the hospitality space uh, are absolutely stepping up. Uh, I mean, I've seen all sorts of interesting uh, tweets over the last uh, day or two, um, you know, recognizing uh, uh, the leaders of, of travel, um, you know, the airlines, the, the hotels, um, all stepping up in in um, in ways that we should all be uh, grateful to them. Uh, I saw that uh, the beverage companies like Anheuser Busch are, yeah. uh, you know, bringing in you know truckloads of canned water. Right. Uh, you know, and so uh, Kelvin Sampson, who's the basketball coach at the University of Houston, has challenged every NCAA basketball coach to send ten pairs of shoes uh, from their program. Uh, you know, to, to the area. So um, I I think, I think they're going to be more and more stories that we'll want to retweet uh, over the, over the next couple days and weeks, because this, this story, this story is going to go on for a long, long time. It sure will, and I love that. And uh, you know, not to make a bad joke, but I'm going to do it anyway. I mean, Budweiser is pretty close to water anyway, so it couldn't have been that much of a uh, of a deal. Sorry, too soon. I know. Okay, so Scott, moving on. Um, I, one of the things that I'm interested in. It's really tough to make a segue away from that back to regular business, right? So. Um, One of the things that I always find interesting and curious is that we like to talk about the industry in aggregate, but we all know it's a street corner game. How do you approach your data with the understanding that it's kind of just a benchmark number and everybody's reality is a little bit different than the numbers that STR presents, you present, and some of the other folks out there present? Well, you know, I'm not going to speak for others, uh, but we take this uh, analysis uh, and, and outlook very seriously. We've been doing it, Glenn, yep. for uh, over 25 years. Wow. Um, I, think we've, I think we've got it down. Um, and, you know, the industry looks at it as a bit of a drug uh, because, <laughs> you know, my, my email uh, it starts uh, um, uh, flowing and saying, where, where is it? Where is it? Uh, and, and so I, yeah. we're very proud we're very proud of, of the, of the data awesome. that in the thought leadership that PwC produces, um, you know, that being said, um, you know, it is an imperfect science and, you know, um, generally, uh, folks remember when, um, you know, you are, are, are more off target than on target. Right. Um, and that happens, uh, uh occasionally. Nah, not um, with you guys. But usually, yeah, well, there's there there are good reasons, right? You know, there are good reasons. Um, I, I would say though, generally, as I as I talk to our clients and um, others, you know, I, I think that 
um, our forecast, the PwC forecast, and and uh, those uh, that are are being uh, produced by others are, are generally in alignment. And then, you know, uh, in in listening to the second quarter uh, analyst calls from the publicly traded hospitality operating companies, right. um, their guidance is um, very much in line um, with where where we are. And, and, and that is something between one and 3% red par growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, PwC anticipates that 2017 for the entirety of the lodging industry in the United States mm-hmm. will grow at a uh, red par of uh, growth of 2.3%. And that's largely uh, driven by um, uh, a, a slight increase in, in average daily rates across all of the uh, chain scales that STR reports on. Um, so, you know, it's, um, you know, I think uh, we, we've been reading that the industry has enjoyed 90 consecutive months of occupancy uh, percentage mm-hmm. uh, growth. Um, I think uh, it's either going to be the, the, the last quarter of, of 2017 or the first quarter of 18. Um, we're going to see that slip into uh, the red, yes. uh, and uh, you know the the, the wind streak is going to be over. Yeah, um, which is kind of which is kind, kind of sad, but it doesn't have to be over, Scott. I mean, one of the things that I'm preaching out there on a regular basis is sure occupancy is softening, but it looks like Revpar and ADR in 2018 are going to continue to go up. That tells me that individual hoteliers have pricing power when they're able to better connect with guests in meaningful ways. How do you see the fact that we're still able to maybe get some more? rate increases even in a, a market where occupancy is even or dipping down a couple of percentage points. Yeah, no, I think you make a good point. Let, you know, we're the, the general uh, industry uh, in the United States is going to be positive. And, um, you know, listen, um, we, we were both around in 2010, yep. um, you know, when uh, Repar, you know, was, uh, you know, fell by 16%. Right. Yeah. And so, we got a bit greedy, right? I mean, uh, 2014, the industry finished at 8, 8.2% rev par growth, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and followed by a, uh, a 6.2 growth. So over 14 and 15, we saw almost 15% rev par growth in the industry. Right. And so when we talk in, in numbers like 1, 2, and 3%, you know, there's, there's this cry of, of concern. Um, and you know, that there's it's legitimate reasons why, yeah. um, it, 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 there, it has decelerated. Right. And I tell people, um, Hey, forget about it. We've had so many great increases since the depths of the recession over time that percentage wise, you're just not going to see those numbers increase in any meaningful way. Like they used to, if you look at it in a real dollars, um, increase, uh, you're still getting, I think some nice increases year over year that we've been having, but to think that we're going to have this incredible run, like we had two, three years ago, is just, I think mathematically impossible for us to keep up because uh, the American public is not going to be paying that much more for a hotel room within a, a, a two, three year span. It's just not it's just not likely. So I wish hoteliers would um, take a deep breath and understand that even sometimes, though, the numbers look low in terms of percentages. Um, when you put it in the context of history, you're still making pretty decent gains, in my opinion, overall. Or maybe I'm completely wrong. And Scott, feels pretty sp- free. No, no, feel free to no, spank I'm me. Listen, I, I, yeah. I, I think we we've, we uh, I think the uh, you know what these numbers don't show is that generally margins, meaning yes. operating margins, mm-hmm. are at their strongest levels uh, in in history. Right. You know, so hopefully um, everybody is 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 profiting. Owners, operators, um, franchisors, franchisees, um, and so I'm I'm generally bullish uh, and. You know, I think there's good reason, um, you know, unless there is an unforeseen, you know, event. Right. And, right. and, you know, I must I must say that, you know, no, you know, the, the political wins and the, you know, economic uncertainty, uh, you know, around health care and, and tax reform, right. um, you know, are, are huge tests, um, which could ultimately impact corporate business and how uh, U.S. companies behave. And I think what's to be taken from uh, the current 
um, statistics is that leisure business remains very strong. Corporate transient's a bit muted. And corporate group is, I think the word I would use is schizophrenic. Right. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's up one month, down the next. Yeah. Lead times are much shorter. Um, you know, uh, companies are finding, you know, alternative ways to get together yep. and, and save costs. There's this fit for growth mentality, um, you know, that we see across U.S. business. And, you know, I, I think PwC is a part of that. Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting uh, way of looking at it. And I think that there's some other um, factors that we're looking at. I went to the uh, Global Business Travel Association meeting this past July up in uh, Boston, and I found it to be very interesting because n- now we've been talking about alternative lodging and they seem to becoming uh, very viable components now for that corporate business sector, which I think is kind of a scary thing in, in a way. But it's also being embraced by um, some of the major hotel companies as well. How are you seeing that? Well, listen, uh, I, I don't think there's any secret that, you know, the supply numbers are impacted by the emergence mm-hmm. of short-term rentals. Yep. And, um, you know, it, it's very hard to monitor because that supply is so elastic. Yeah. You know, some of the academics... Um, you know, the universities are, are trying to, you know, uh, do primary research uh, around that. Um, I, I still believe it's inconclusive. There's no question that it, it probably is having uh, impact on room rates and their compression, meaning normally in, in Economics 101, Glenn, you and I took you know, many years ago, we learned that when demand increases, you know, so does pricing. That's right. And the expectation of uh, our clients, of economists, of people that do this for a living, is that you would expect to see much stronger pricing power within the U.S. lodging environment. And we're not seeing that. We're seeing some growth, mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. at the not at a point where you're you're, you're at set almost seventy percent occupancy across the country. That's telling me we've got a lot of sold out room nights, um, mm-hmm. uh, or a lot mm-hmm. of sold out room, uh, days right. uh, in in the U.S. hotel industry. And so um, I think you know it, it is all about room rate and. Um, there's no question. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I want pictures of some of my partners, some of my PwC partners staying in a short-term rental business, um, uh, because, uh, you know, they're, they're about their, the loyalty and, and their points and, you know, uh, getting to that milestone goal of, you know, platinum, gold or silver. Yeah. Well, that is a that is an important goal to have in in life is to make those things. I feel the same way about my uh, my airline of of choice. I'm addicted to doing those points. And it's really uh, quite sad (laughs) that I do that. But, hey, it's fun. Right. So, um, well, it's part of it it really is part of our culture. Right. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's an easy icebreaker uh, in any conversation, you know, to talk about loyalty uh, and customer experience and what happened on your flight or in your hotel. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the airlines uh, have been, you know, more of a punching band, a punching bag than the hotels. Right. Uh, but we we we've, we've had our bad days as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I love when I go to these conferences. You hit the cocktail party circuit, and that and that's what you uh, you wind up talking about the points. And it's funny that the hotel industry insiders are as much about that as the uh, the average business traveler and consumer. So I find that really hysterical. Um, all right, so Scott, any um, anything else that you think that you want to talk about today? It's great to have you on the phone and to just uh, hear what you're thinking about. Uh, to me, I feel like we're at the point of the uh, the cycle where I'm telling hoteliers, don't be cocky. Um, a lot of it may or may not be because of what you're doing, but it could be industry fundamentals that are making you look great. Perhaps now's the time to do a uh, a double check on on what you're doing operationally with all your expenses and make sure everything is good, just in case we do start to see that decline in occupancy and maybe a little bit more eroding in pricing power. Yeah, I, I, I you know, my, my final comment would be um, around owners behaviors. Um, and, um, you know, the fact that they are generally um, uh, quiet, uh, mm-hmm. uh, they, uh, they, they are content, right? And, and um, there, there is a lot of pressure uh, on the hotel operators today, 
um, you know, to, to perform, um, you know, and to generate uh, heads and beds. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, my point is that the margins are good. Um, and, you know, th- that means that the industry is keeping their eye on the ball. Yeah. Um, there have been moments in our careers when we know that hasn't happened. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, we're, we're in really good shape. Um, you know, and, you know, I think w- we will continue to see, um, more, you know, supply increases. And that's because, um, in, in many markets, uh, there remains a need, uh, to develop and generate, you know, new inventory. So, right. um, I think overall, you know, the, the no question there are some headwinds and uh but overall at a very high level um the industry across all the chain scales are doing just fine beautiful i love it and i think that's a a great way to sum up uh, everything and i'm thinking i wonder what the lesson that we're going to learn in the next downturn we'll look back at these days and go oh we missed that one thing that's going to be uh interesting any idea what that might might be or you know or he was uh you know, in the shadows about this with the rest of us? Well, I listen, um, at, at PwC, you know, I think our, our, uh, our focus is on uh, helping our clients sort of manage the technological revolution. Yeah. Um, you know, if we had had this conversation, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, mm-hmm. you know, half of the issues that um, uh, are on the front burner uh, didn't exist. Right. Um, you know, around distribution, how customers are booking, how they're making decisions around which hotel to select, the applications they're loading to their phones. Um, you know, and so uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the password is disruption. But in spite of it, in spite right. of those headwinds that we discussed, um, you know, the margins are, um, for the most part, acceptable. So, I, you know, again, I can't predict the future and, and you know, could there be, you know, unforeseen um, of you know, acts of God? Of yep. course. Mm-hmm. All right. And we, we have experienced that as, as an industry. We talked about Houston and, and you know, the uh, situation there. And, and you know, listen, um, two weeks ago, no one had any idea. It's going to change Houston and Texas forever. Right. Uh, and so, um, you know, that's what uh, makes, uh, you know, being a consultant and being an advisor, being a trusted advisor, you know, um, you know, so rewarding. Yeah, it, it, there's it, there's always something, uh, you know, that, that challenges us and to think about and, you know, put a solution on the table. And uh, I hate to just ask one more question. But speaking of challenges, I hate to uh, ignore the big news that dropped. It's almost become um, covered up because of all that's happening in Houston. But uh, uh, Expedia's Dara Koshro Shahi, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, moving from Expedia, it looks like to be CEO of Uber. Any uh, thoughts on, on that? Sounds really interesting to me. Well, no, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't, other than to say that, you know, he uh, very quickly rose, um, to, um, you know, CEO fame quickly. Uh, he's highly thought of, and I don't think anybody can dispute, you know, his success, you know, in the, in the OTA space. Um, and, and, you know, so, um, I wish him the best of luck. Um, and as a, uh, you know, as a client, I will be, um, making sure he hears from me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Good, better, and different. <laughs> awesome. I love it, and that's really a great way to uh, end. I want to thank Scott Berman for being here. But, Scott, i got to ask you, shameless plug, how can people find you? How can people find PwC? How can people engage you in your services? Well, uh, thank you, Glenn. Uh, very much appreciate the conversation. I've enjoyed it as, as well. So we just published Hospitality Directions uh, U.S. version. Uh, came out this morning. Uh, so, uh, I would encourage you to go to pwc.com, uh, backslash hospitality, uh, or to reach out to me at scott.berman at pwc.com. And we'd be happy to get that out to you. 
Beautiful. I love it. And I know I rely on things that Scott has to say. And it's always a highlight when I get to uh, hear your perspective at industry conferences. Why? Because you make me look smart, Scott. And I love taking what you say and uh, turning it into uh, Glenn speak and then, you know, stealing all stealing all your thunder. Nothing personal. You're too kind. Yeah, but it's uh, really great stuff. And I highly urge you to check out PWC.com slash hospitality. I want to thank you all for listening. And we got lots more great show on No Vacancy coming up right after this break. Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.